It's once again live from Studio C. It's 3D shenanigans. Super nice to see you all for the second time today. This is really nice. Hello, Julia. Hello, Mr. Brian. And hello, anyone else who's out there watching. Thank you so much for dropping by and joining me. Can you believe I actually came prepared today? Namely, I have... Um, I can't quite believe it. I have loaded the Unreal Engine project already so that we don't sit here for the next 25 minutes to an hour and a half watching Unreal Engine load. No, look at that. It's actually ready to rock and roll. And it went just like the, the devil has it, just like I remember it. When I uh, loaded it in, it literally took less than a minute for the whole project to come up. And yeah, it's one of those things I thought I'd, I'd share that with you because, you know, I thought it was quite, quite funny, actually. I could prove it to you by closing it again and then reopening it, but <laughs> maybe we shouldn't do that. Just to, um, just to show you that this, when you save a project here, this is actually shown as a thumbnail in the library. There we go. This is my, my epic launcher here. And this is that little thumbnail that it shows me. It's kind of nice, isn't it? Can you see that? This is really, really, really cool. Madness Middles, how you doing? Good to see you. Thank you so much for dropping by and joining us. I'm going to start the whole show with a bit of music inspired by Wonder Shakes. It's not exactly Wonder Shakes, but it's, you know, along those lines. Have I actually put that in here? And it's playing in the living room. That's not what we want. We, we, we want to hear it. Let's go. We play it here. Much better. All righty. I hope it's not too loud. If it is, do let me know. Bit of disco boogie beats. I think that's what we need when we play with Unreal Engine. So yesterday, I have kind of tentatively set this thing up. And ahoy, Mr. Jeremy, for the second time in a day as well. Very good. Welcome to a bit of chilled out Unreal Engine doodling. I've kind of set up this project last time. This is uh, currently got all kinds of other things in like these Unreal Engine guys here. They are walking up and down in a navigation mesh. But really what I want to do is a keyframe animation that pans through the whole park here. And just to remember what I wanted to do, I've put a start position in. And that's just called, you know, quite aptly start. Boom, there it is. Nothing special. But from here, switch all my other bits and pieces off. I'm just going to have a quick wander around the park and see where I'd like to go. I mean, the park is large. It's really, really big. I'm going to go, I believe, was it here or there? I, I kind of forgot. I think it was here. Yes, this is this is the way. I'm going to start somewhere here. Yet to be determined where exactly. I kind of like to start high up. I'd love for people to see some of the park perspective. So maybe I will do something like this. That we, that we approach this here. Just seeing the green. And then we're going to go and, and fly. I don't know how fast or slow yet. I think the whole animation is going to be about 30 seconds. So maybe at this type of speed. And we'll see if we can put some movement in here. I don't know how Unreal Engine feels about this. Having AI controlled characters in here. While rendering out a keyframe animation. I really don't know. We go past the water here. I think. And we're going to go. Whoops. We're going to go and head over. Man. <laughs> head over this thing. And I'll go fly right through here. That's the plan. Fly right through here without going anywhere else. We go down here. And, <clears throat> and end up right here at the 3D shenanigan sign. So it's a fairly straight move from which we can then deviate left and right a little bit with just small movements and nothing too extravagant. And then we'll, we'll sit here on that logo for like, you know, 10 seconds or so and we'll probably approach it from here let the camera just go pan over here see it from a different angle and maybe i don't know maybe go further up i don't know i think i'll just be level i'll just be level with the logo so that's the plan see if we can set this up see how long it takes including rendering this out 
So that's the plan. I've got a tentative starting position here. So all I need to do is press F and there I am. But of course, in order to get that animation going, I need to go and set up a few other things. So one of them is a cine camera actor. And that's this one here. So I'll go drag that in for now, somewhere into here. That's the one. Display everything else. And I might rename that into, into JCAM. That'll be good. JCAM. Manders Middles, tell me, how are you today? Good to see you again. And Brian, I think I had another idea about the, was it the cat of your old lady? I think was it, was it, did you say Freckles? Did I say Freckles? I can't remember now, but Freckles, more than Freckles, Freckles and Mort sounds like a really, sounds like an apt title. I like that. That was great. We have a sequencer in here already, but that is not what we need. Oh, auto saving packages. Well, that, they'll take 20 minutes or so. No worries. We'll just kick back and watch the spectacle. Excellent. Oh, there we go. That was faster than I thought. And you're thinking about this as an animation, right? Rather than a comic strip, just out of interest. We need something else, and that is up here under cinematics, I believe. We need to add a level sequence. And I will, I will bring that into just third person BP. Uh, maybe I'll make a new folder here and I'll call that one sequences. Did I spell that correctly? Probably not. Sequences. There we go. And we'll call this one playground approach. Because I have a feeling I'm gonna go and make others in this set It'll be nice to just go and have have several in here. So playground, playground approach, animations. I like it. And would they be would there be an over voice in them? This doesn't really need to be anywhere specific. It's it's just an object in the in the scene here. I'll just put that close to where the start object is. So this could technically replace the start object. And this is kind of where our camera is going to be. I'm, I'm just going to go and find a suitable place for it, for the camera. I think I can pilot this as well. Let me see if that works. I can, yeah, there we go. This is now the, the actual camera. And can I pilot? Yes, there we go. I can totally pilot it. Let's see if I... It now has depth of field as well, which is really cool. So that's that's something that's that's just in the camera. And it also means if I pilot the camera, it lets me preview the uh, the whole, uh, like all kinds of other settings. So I think this is not quite wide enough for my for my liking. It's, um, you know, it's nice, but it's not as wide as the other preview camera was. So I'm gonna go and exit out of that and just make sure that my J cam Jcam has a few other options down here. Focal length 35. Yeah, I think I might make that something like 18 might be a bit that might be that might be very wide. 18 might also be really cool. I don't really know yet. 18 or 28, something like that. Maybe I'll try 18. Let's try this pan with 18. That might be cool. Because ideally I'd like for I like for the viewers to see the park or at least the green or something like that and the logo is right here so I might just go and try this try this like that is it gonna work is it gonna work oops yeah I need to make sure I stay as far left as possible so I can approach this ad uh, with the straight here but you know, wide, I like the wide, man. I just don't know what's gonna look like when we get to the logo. So when, we, when we're wide, then we can go and, and get closer to objects. Yes, I think I like that. 18 it is. And then we're there, perfect. Ready. 
You do the voices. All oh, right. Old lady's voice. That sounds good, Brian. That sounds great. <laughs> It'll be good to do that, and especially if it's something sequential that you can come back to and then flesh out the universe. It's almost like a, like a, like the process of writing something, isn't it? Like a book type thing, story type thing, just told in a different way. It's such a big part. So I think, Brian, I think last time we were wondering, can we do... Can we do something where we just move the camera and then uh, and then just click keyframes if as as we see fit? And I think I'm hoping that's what piloting the camera does. So let's see if we can do that. So are we we already is this already the is this already that's just the animation here. And I'm zoomed out. I'm zoomed in, I mean. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've just realized that. This is the animation, but this uh, I don't I don't really know what that track is or does right now. It's a weird one. I'm gonna go delete that. Maybe it's supposed to be here. I don't know, because if I remember correctly, I need to select my camera now and just make sure I create a track here. Act, act, actor to sequence the J cam. There we go. Yeah, that makes more sense. So now this is the J cam in here. And Jcam has transform. I don't know why Playground Approach also has transform. I don't know, maybe that just needs to be in there. Camera component has all these other things that we can set. So I could animate things like the focal distance and stuff. I don't really want to do that. So that will remain closed. So transform is the section that we want to that we want to actually play with. In, in our case, location more than rotation right now. So location is really the only thing that we want to animate and i think if this is the correct thing can we just go say boom and just as a test if we move the play hat further and i go and pilot my camera over here and i go and put that as a keyframe then i should be able to yes there we go that is that is exactly how we do that ha 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 all right piloting the camera that is exactly what what we had to do. So I'll go and get rid of that keyframe and I will go and set myself something along the lines of if we're thinking in 30 frames a second for what are we saying? We're saying 30 seconds in total, 30 times 30, that's 900 frames. Let's see if we can make that happen. 900. Boom. Good stuff. So from here to there, 900 frames. We reckon. And then we go to frame 900 now. Let's let's assume it's here. Let's actually let's go and display a thousand frames, not ten thousand, just a thousand, just so that we have a little bit of extra stuff here. And then the red line that can be pulled to here, and that'll be our last frame. So I'll go to the last frame that I'd like to hit, and then we'll see if the speed is going to be all right. So that's that's just going to be uh, just like I did it before. A little bit faster, go all the way through, kind of through here, and eventually reach that logo. Just in regards to location. Boom. And now we have that. So that's that's not a bad that's not a bad start. Not perfect, but we can we can at least deduce do we like the speed of this or do we need this to be uh, faster? Yeah, see, 30 seconds was already... That was that was too slow, isn't it? Or was that all right? Oh, hey! People have arrived. How exciting. Joe, good to see you. Hello, hello. Christina, very nice to see you. I'm already right into making my thing here today. I We don't have to wait for this to load an hour and a half, so that's that's quite nice. Wonderful to see you. I'm really, really sorry to hear about your hard drive crash, Christina. That is really, really sad. That is extremely sad. I might make this a bit faster and we'll say we'll take uh, 10 seconds. We'll say, yeah, it takes 10, 10 seconds off for us to reach that point. So 10 seconds and 30 frames. Uh, that is 300 frames. So we're, we're saying make that 600. Because if we're arriving there at frame 600, 
ish don't have to be exact but if we do that if we arrive there at frame 600 then we can go and uh, and just literally pan around the the logo for another 10 seconds so i just like to arrive here at that point and i don't think i'm i'm close enough really yet so i just want to nail that last that last uh, keyframe so if we're here This is all a bit uh, fast navigation here. You can always tweak it later. Yeah, if I go approach it here, and then on the last keyframe, so I'll go and lock this in, and then over the next 10 seconds or so, we can then go and, and make sure that by this time, at frame 900, We're kind of here, ish, ish. Might also go lock in that rotation here. Is that is that nice? No, it's not because we've we've tweaked the rotation. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't have should have left the rotation out completely. And now screwed up the rotation. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, let's work on the rotation next. Rotation next. So back on the first frame, I can also go use these puppies here and go, go point in the correct direction and make sure I lock that rotation in like so. Okay, let's see if the, if the general direction and speed now plays out better. I do like that. I'd like it a bit faster. It's easy to set this up and then we can elongate it later. I suppose there's also the speed up and the slow down, but I'm kind of happy with that as well. And then that position needs to be corrected and we need to add that rotation there. Okay, not bad. And there's no way, yeah, I can imagine, you need to work overtime now, right? Um, one of those things. So um, I've, I wonder if this is something that, that I thought, uh, I remember having a hard drive that had crashed. And uh, I was wondering if you'd consider potentially, uh, potentially uh, running something like um, what are they called here like the paragon or something like that it's just it's just one of those uh, programs that allows you to try and restore the hard drive if there's anything you know I, I, I don't know how damaged it is it's it's always difficult to uh, to say but I wonder if there's a way to to just um, you know keep it kind of bring it back or is it beyond repair, you think? I kind of want to nail the ending before we before we do anything else. It's fairly simple to just put another uh, keyframe in here and just keep this thing in the middle. And it's just a rotation. I'm not I'm not doing any any translations right now. And it's just just a rough thing so if we go and do this from here we might actually hit the logo slightly further on the right so that's that's kind of that's kind of nice i think i'd like for this keyframe here for for that to literally go and uh, to be here location i don't think we've updated that just wanted to make sure we hit the logo here and then we do that so that's that's nice that's to, if this is our ending no matter how we approach it this is awesome this is what i like right right okay <laughs> good to know good to know yes i'm aware of your vertical uh, joel so if this is making you, if any of this is making you uncomfortable, do let me know. Uh, or in fact, uh, look away, you know, <laughs> probably the best, probably the best. So in, from the beginning then, 
We can also we can fiddle with the with the fact that how fast is it speeding up. I'm just gonna go and stick with this speed and just make sure I hit my next target appropriately, which is kind of here. So I wanna make sure that at this point, I'd like to be uh, at the bottom already so that I can literally go in here. That's the next thing I'm gonna try and attempt. Uh, kind of good that I'm off the beaten path here. I might just do these, use these location values here to get myself that value. So I think it's the Z we need to come down somewhat to at least here. And then we'll try X and Y. Whoa, that's uncool. Man, that was not good. I wish that was a fine control. I think I have that on my mouse. Do I have that on my mouse? I think so. To make extremely small adjustments. There's also a bit of snapping activated here that I might get get rid of. Oh yeah, this is this is a fine mode, so it takes me forever to move my cursor now. There. But I can switch it on and off. So I wonder if this is groovy. We would have then we're gonna go and dive in there better, so this is not ignore that. And then we're hitting hitting this. And just so that we can go through there uh, at the right angle, I'm also going to have to use my rotational values here. I never know what they are. If it's roll. Uh, no, it's not roll. Even though we can add that later. Is it pitch? It's not pitch. It is yaw. <laughs> the total, su total surprise for me every time. So yeah, if this, if this is kind of heading straight there. I need to go and come back with, was it, was it, well, no, 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 don't do that. It was, was it X? Man, I'm still in careful mode though, don't I, aren't I? I thought. T terrible. Not at all. Yeah, I see, this is, this is bizarre because this is kind of not what I'm, what I want at all. But is there no way to do? I have to guess values here. That's that's really bad. Can't I just go and just carefully adjust them here without without that doing that? Uh, I guess not. Okay, good. That's um, exciting. I wish we had a calculator now. Maybe I have that in Unreal Engine that I can say instead of this very long number. Should I try? I don't know. Maybe something like. That has a zero here. Is that is that better? Yes, that is the correct way <laughs> to go. So I wonder if I can just say say in Blender I could say minus twenty now, and and that would be that would work. I don't know if that works here. Minus twenty. Does it? Oh my goodness, it works! <gasps> Excellent. Oh, that is awesome. So I can just go plus uh, forty now. Yeah, that is uh, probably not what I wanted. <laughs> Does that work? Well, that was times, right? Right. Plus 40. Yes, that works. That works. How exciting. Ooh, that is nice. So we're just a bit too high there. Kind of happy to correct the, the rotation at the end. We're just a bit too high at this keyframe. Also very important to be at that very keyframe. So we just come in a bit lower. That's Z. Z, can I do that by finagling this? Yes, I think so. That's nice, maybe. Still a bit too high. Go lower. Maybe. Mr. Backdoor, how you doing? Top of the morning. Welcome, thank you so much for joining me with hopefully a good hot beverage at your end in what is it now it's now it's heading into summer and it's really hot where you are right very strange it's still warm where we are Ooh. 
that's where this little button on the trackball really comes in handy yeah this is nice this is kind of what i wanted i think kind of just halfway through maybe here i just like to adjust that angle just the the way we're where we're looking i think i just need to adjust the camera rotation perhaps at this point to look slightly to the left so this is just a, the tiny tiny course correction we need to make here and that was your as well was it not yeah something like that see if that's enough no that wasn't enough previous key is comma okay that's that's good let's do that that's comma and we need to do a bit more your into kind of this direction comma there we go that was also not good so i'll go back with that Let's see what what other your yawness we can we can do here we need to correct the position as well could be that we need to just go slightly further over ah slightly further like this minus 10 was it Let's see what this is like. This is usually, this is not a good idea to to do this that early on in the process. I just want to make sure we we exit at this at this point exactly. And you know, a moment ago we weren't quite doing that. So that's kind of nice. I just want to I just want to make sure we're now going exactly through the middle there. So I just need to finagle my way in there, and then we can work on the beginning. So this is also a locational thing. Let's say this one is plus 20 here. That's not bad. And then we need to just correct where we're looking just a tiny amount. I'm sure there's a way to put a grid on the, on the whole thing. Uh, currently it's not quite in the middle. I think we also need to shift we need to shift our way slightly further over to the right don't we so that and this is another is another plus 10 here yes actually that's it's pretty spot on just a tiny bit tiny bit further and down as well we need to come we need to come down at that point that's cool we can do that it's a tiny bit further, I'm thinking. Tiny bit further. Is it another 10? I see, I think 10 is probably a little too much. Let's call it five. And we need to come down. So down is Z as I live and breathe to about here. Yes, that's nice. So it also means that maybe if, if this is now wonky as we go through there and too fast as well, that is we can always slow that down. It's really not a problem to slow the to slow the whole thing down. I think now we have that little uh, we've got the end position correct. We have that middle course correction and we also have the the entrance so the entrance is correct here it's almost it's almost not correct we probably need to correct the entrance now more in order to have a to have a good exit we could try that as well that we literally just remove all these keyframes i should have done this actually i should have made sure the exit is correct but i had to rough rough out how we get in here so i might just go and take this as a new entry because we're kind of approaching it at the correct angle here. Whoops. Hit the wrong button there. It is also happening rather fast. So I, I just don't want the camera to go to do this, this, this wiggly thing. And it can be avoided if we just do this uh, absolutely straight. So yeah, so I might just go get rid of these. And that, and just try to correct that on the entrance better. Namely here. See if we can make that better. Is that 
the full stop to go back and further. Oh, there we go. So comma is go back one keyframe, full stop is go further. Steve, our AC has to be on all the time, summer and winter. Sometimes in the winter, we can have it, we have to go and uh, make it go on heat mode. That happens only very, very rarely, but we do have to do that. But other than that, it'll be, it's basically on all the time. Not like on, I mean, it's on a thermostat, so it comes on and off, but yeah, that's what we have to do. And Christina, hot weather still makes you want to have cold... Uh, hot weather still wants to make you have hot drinks, bizarrely. I don't really know why. Let's go if we can shift this over, um, like, maybe 50 here. Oh, no, it was Y, wasn't it? So in Y, let's go, was it plus 50? It's better. Oh, no, look, at that's terrible. Oh, see, that's not actually, that's not good at all. How come that has adjusted my exit then? That's not good at all. So we have to go do this. Boy, what happened to my other keyframes? Okay, fine. I'm going to go hit Control Z until I get my previous thing back. There we go. And I'm just going to live with that, with that little wiggle here. Who cares? It's fine. <laughs> if I can't solve it any other way, that's okay with me. I think here, did I just, I just adjusted the height there. I thought I did. Should have done that really. So height, just go down. Down is Z, no problem. There, Z. Cool, all right. This, and eventually we come here. So we'll go and, and make sure here we're gonna go further down and dive underneath the bushes and we come back but i'll rough out the beginning first or in fact going back i think from here i'd like to approach this and maybe at this point here i'd like to be closer to the uh, to the fountain let's see if i can make that happen oops Oh, so I have to maybe go, I have to be on one of those and then the keyframes will work. Oh, that's how it works. That's quite nice. So if I'm on this track, on the your track, it'll go to the next your keyframe, but will ignore all the other keyframes. Oh, that's quite handy. As we finagle our way through Unreal Engine, that is, that is quite nice. That is very nice. So here I have a choice. If I want to keep this, this approach point here, I can do that. Or I can move it, which will then change my approach to here. So perhaps instead of doing that, I might just go and have the camera turn into a different direction. That when we're here, I might have the camera be in uh, looking this way. But in regards to rotation, I'm going to go set a keyframe down here and see what happens if I if I'm slightly further here. Perhaps I will just, I'll just be closer to the, to the fountain now, I'm thinking. I don't want to screw the whole approach thing up. I can also do something with looking, that is also possible. Also, does this work? Oops. Let's see what this does. Maybe it's terrible. Could be. Yeah, nice. So before we before we actually go at this point, look at that. I think I'd like to stay on the 
on the fountain. So maybe at this point here, I like to certainly look into this direction. But the one before here, I'd love it if we could just look the other way. Let's have a look at the fountain, maybe. See how that works. Fountain. Move on over here. No, that's look, that looks terrible. What a shame. Ruined it. <laughs> what a shame. Control Z's your friend. Okay, forget that idea. Might have to start all over again if I'm getting too too off the beaten track and path. So we know this works, so we're gonna go leave that, leave that all alone. Just make sure we, we get the beginning right first. Yes, it is. Uh, it's I, maybe there's tricks that you can employ, but there's still one thing I'm I'm I find weird. So I can I can literally I can be in the viewport now, and I'll just go and uh, move the camera here so that we can we can test this. If I'm here, I can right click and then look around, which me piloting the camera would would suggest I'm now shifting raw pitch and yaw. I can even shift the position of the camera like this. You'd imagine this now creates a keyframe, but okay, it doesn't, that's fine. I'm thinking, so I'll go and create one manually because I've moved the camera. So if I were to go and press the location keyframe now, I'd imagine this is locking in whatever uh, I'm looking at right now, but it appears that's not what it's doing. It's doing something else. So if I do this, I should expect now that both my values should be locked in, but that is not the case. And I find that a bit, that's just, I don't really understand that. It might be that I don't get it, that's possible. Could also be that there's just, uh, am I using local versus non-local values? That is also possible. It's, you know, question mark. I would, you know, Steve, I would imagine it's, I see the path here. So you can, you can see it here. Uh, somewhere. Oh, no, maybe it's just when I'm when I'm moving my playhead. So like this thing ahead of us. Sometimes you see it. I have to activate it. I did see it, so it is generating one behind the scenes. But I don't know if it's a an object that I can manipulate. There's a blue line every once in a while. Have a look if you can see it. There's I think closer to the logo here somewhere. Nah, I I can't see it anymore. But this this looked like. It was that motion path that you were uh, that you were talking about. There it is. Look at that. This is the one. Maybe we should have selected it properly. I don't really know what it is or if I can, in fact, select it. Yeah, I, I guess I can. But if I go and and unpilot the camera, just go eject here. I think. No, I think it's this one. Whatever needs ejecting, there. Stop piloting that. You'd imagine it would be visible somewhere, but I, I don't know where, where that is. I don't think anyone explains it as well. There, like this, this, this blue line is. I can see that the that the motion path is kind of attached to the camera, and for me, it'd be really helpful to just pick up these points and then move them around. But if I do that, it looks like the camera is then on that. Oh, maybe I can. Maybe I can. Can I now go and do this, essentially? Uh, not really. It doesn't really move the path. Oh, now the path is gone. Hey! Excellent! See, so, yeah, I could be that this is a rogue keyframe here. We'll, we'll watch out for that. There's the camera from my third person perspective. Do I need to select the camera for that to for that to show up? No, not really. Yeah, that's a bizarre one, so I haven't worked that one out yet. And I can go and pilot it and then I look through the camera. Oh yeah, that looks like a rogue keyframe there, isn't it? Oh no, this is now the camera cut track. I think I've cut to something that I wasn't meant to cut to.
I'll just go to cut to my camera instead, Jcam, boom. That should now cut to my camera. Does it? Totally doesn't do that. Why not? Let's go to the beginning, go to front, pick my camera actor up and add it to here. Existing one in Jcam, there we go. Switch there. And you're still not showing me that? That's, that's bizarre. Is it because I have to pilot my camera? Pilot Jcam, yes, there we go. That's what I need to do. Yeah, so we have something like a motion path. But how exactly it works, we, we don't really know. Ah, path animations. Thank you, Steve. I will make sure I keep that in a tab open so I can watch it later. Excellent. Thank you. That'll certainly come in handy. Thank you for playing that automatically, laptop, which you can't do because you're too not powerful enough for a laptop. So um, I think I'm kind of happy with the opening shot. I just want to make sure we dive and then uh, go closer to the ground and then we come, we come up again. So maybe something like this in the first three seconds. I'd like for us to be to point to the ground more. So I suppose for the first two seconds, I don't want us to do anything else. So I'll go and make sure those values stay the same. And then over the course of a second, I'd like for us to go uh, just dive and go down as well. And diving, that was, what is that, roll? Uh, no, it's never roll, is it? <laughs> is it pitch? Yes, pitch. And then at this point, I'd like us to be kind of in the final position close to the ground. So we pitch kind of back up and we go further down, like close, so we can, we can literally see the dog's perspective here. And looking ahead. See what that looks like. I don't know why we're off now. I can't tell. That's a mystery. There's a keyframe that that puts us at the beginning of this and there's one that puts us out of it. I don't know why we've moved away from my starting position. Now that doesn't make a great deal of sense. Could be that it's just the way we're looking at it. Could be that the position is actually correct and we're looking wrong. Could that be? I don't think so. Because yeah, even if I'm looking at a different position, it looks like the motion path itself has changed. That's bad. Oh great, maybe I'll just go and press Control Z as often as I like and just make sure this thing is is good. It's kind of the main feature of the thing. That is bizarre. That that should change. Maybe I'll go, I just try something in the middle here and just see if just moving the camera down without changing anything else will will change that like so. So then we just do this. It hasn't changed that. Good stuff. So I mustn't deviate from that at all. I can I can maybe deviate with looking and I could probably do with being down a bit earlier. Or later. Yeah maybe later. So I don't go through that, through the leaves there. Maybe I'll just go move that over here. Maybe that's that's better, I can't, I can't tell yet. 
Oh, we'll just go through the leaves. Who cares? Fine. I think at this point, though, I'd like to look at the fountain. I'd like to, when I come down here, I'd like to look further to the right. Maybe I can make that happen at least. And that was, what was that? Your? That was your, wasn't it? Is that possible? And not quite what I had thought. Not really. Maybe just at this point. Let's try your at this point. Hey Rod, how you doing? Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, it's but it's kind of it's too late at that point. In fact, actually, let's go and do this. Let's just redo this. Let's redo set value because we're looking at the correct direction. We just need to keep looking at it until about here. I think that's a good idea, at least. So at that point, make the yaw still be kind of here. Will that work? And then we look away. Or well, is that going to be too much? No, actually, that could work. Could this work? I'm not happy going through the bushes there. I'd like to do this more. You know, I like to do this slightly better. This is nice. I think I like this. That's cool. Uh, yeah, this is this whole foliage thing we have to sort out. But that's that's nice then. I think that's kind of closer to... I can, I can kind of live with that is what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, you did a webinar. Digital Art Live. Nice. Excellent. Uh, let me go exit the, the piloting here. And I did get your email, Rod. Uh, I, I thought maybe rather than explaining it in words, I might just go and uh, and show you in a moment where you can find those park assets. Rod has uh, got this product here yesterday, the, the park assets. And he says, well, where do I go and what what where, where are my assets now? What what do I even, what do I do? And it's, it's not an easy process. <laughs> it's... It's a little bit convoluted, but uh, you get that. You have to install the Epic Launcher, and then you have the thing that Steve was referring to, which was your vault. So you have to have that. If you don't have that installed, then you don't get access to your assets. So the Launcher app is a bit like, it's a bit like Steam. It's a bit like, um, almost like Install Manager, if you will, you know, in, in Das Studio. I think kind of here we just need to be deeper already. I think that's that's the whole that's the whole puzzle. At that point we're already kind of here. Let's try that. Location that was Z, wasn't it? Boom. See if that works. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. And then we do say so this is this is nice actually this is nice so um got rid of the bushes i'll go and pilot my jcam again and this is happening fairly slow at the beginning i think i'm okay doing this and now at this point i'm gonna go and add a subtle camera pan to the right so that i don't look at that when this is happening i'll just look at the path so right here, I'll go and do a bit of yaw, yawing, like so. Could even look up a little bit, which was pitch, was it? Like so. Just look ahead. And then just remembering that that's where we're looking. We're then already looking at this. That's also nice. Very good. Could even look further to the right now. That might be nice too. Let's do that at this keyframe. This was Z, so let's make sure we're not looking at that bush at that point. We'll just go and look 
I don't know, at the park. Uh, not roll. No, 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 we don't want to touch roll. Forget roll. It's your and pitch, is it not? I'm not quite... I'm not super happy with all the foliage. I can always move the foliage. That's the other cool thing. That is another funky animator's trick. We can move the foliage. And we're already here at that point. No, see, I don't like that. That's We're looking at nothing. This is This is not good. Let's get rid of that. Moving the foliage, that's a nice idea. Yeah, like see this is this is not good at that point. That's nice, that's a key thing, but we're looking at literally nothing here, so that's that's all none of that is nice, so let's go get rid of that. I don't want to delete it. No, no, no. It's also not actually what I did. I didn't say, you know, I didn't, I never, the delete button is kind of over here. This is not, this delete isn't down here. So, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I get rid of that your point completely and just go back to the beginning. It should be, I'd like to just follow the path, really. That would be nice. I don't really want to go straight. But last time I tried that, it, it ruined my approach to the thing. So, hmm. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. That's very nice of you, Steve. Excellent. Now Rot knows how to do this thing. Do you know, I was thinking about that earlier, Rod, and I wonder if that's ever going to go away. If if ever we we have a feeling we've got it. I don't think we have ever, because by the time you learned one thing, it feels to me that then technology and or software moves on and there's something else to learn. So by the time you've grasped concepts that you think, hey, this is great. I'm ready to start working with this now. Some new concept comes up and then you have to go learn that. I suppose that's what it's that's what it's like. I'll go and try something. I'll put location and rotation here. Just a, a keyframe. And I'll put another one. Well, literally here. That might be nice. At this very point. And I'll also lock in the complete location and rotation at that point. So that means over here I should have a safe value to play with, like at this, say in the in the very middle here. And doesn't that mean I could now go and move my camera without screwing everything up? Because front and end is sorted, so whatever I do in the middle just gets interpolated, maybe top and back, but it should then, seconds later, still have that approach. Let's test it out. Let's test it out. Let's use this as, as that value. So right here, I'd like to be further over to the right. See if I can make that happen. That is uh, location uh, Y maybe. Yes, it kind of is. Kind of is. And is and my approach is off. This, this is something that doesn't make sense. This is not like like this in any other keyframe animation thing I've ever used. This is this is bizarre. I just don't get. I don't understand what Unreal Engine is interpolating there. This is just not. This doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense. If you lock in a location at some point and you put a keyframe before that and then before that way before that you do something it mustn't screw up anything that happens at the back this is not how how animations work really so that's that's just bizarre that really it can't happen that way because it does make sense it's not this is not this just the only explanation is then that keyframes aren't keyframes here that's the only thing that makes sense 100 percent, steve yeah this is this cannot be possible. Our observations do not match what we know. I think that's what scientists feel like all the time. <laughs> I think that is what they feel like all the time. 
So I suppose I can just get rid of this and then everything is fine again. Is that right? Oh no, actually this was, uh, this was, sorry, this was Y, wasn't it? So Y. And it's, it's still off. That's exciting. Okay. Let's get rid of this as well. How? Right? Not quite possible at all. Hmm. <laughs> Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, huh? At the X location, what does the X location do currently? That is that does that. That's the forward background. Do you think that's the issue, Brian? Let's try that. Let's go to Yes, uh, okay. I mean, what I could do also alternatively is literally instead of setting keyframes for one axis or for one, you know, X, Y or Z, I could literally always set keyframes for, for all frames. That is also possible. I can do that. That might just be, that might just be screwy at one point. But since it's already pretty screwy, I might just go do everything again. How's that? You know, I think the the ending is kind of okay, I suppose, right? We can we can agree that the ending is not as screwed up as it should be. So ending's cool. Speed is kind of all right. This thing is I don't know messed. Full stop. Yeah, let's just do it all again. I think this is what you sometimes have to do. You just have to throw everything away, and just go start again from scratch. I think so. It's also a learning experience, Steve. Yes, I would like to delete that camera completely and all the keyframes that I have on the timeline. Delete it all. There. Good stuff. Sometimes you just have to take a bucket of white paint and just paint over that canvas and start again from scratch. And then also this green line should really start at the beginning here, not somewhere like an undeterminate amount of time before that. Right, yes, camera component, all that needs to really go, doesn't it? Uh, delete, yes, perfect. Playground approach, I don't know why that is on the sequencer to begin with. I suppose that is the sequence itself. So I don't know why it has a track by itself. Could this be that motion path we've been, we've been thinking about? And also, what is this? What is this camera? I've never actually made that camera, so let's go get rid of that. Yeah, I don't know why the the sequence itself has keyframes. That doesn't really make that much sense to me. But hey, <laughs> we're not meant to understand these things. I'll go and make another cine camera actor, and I'll, oh yeah, I'll put that to the to the very beginning. Dart actor somewhere here. And I'll go put my camera somewhere here, tentatively. I'll go and call that one JCAM2, because JCAM1 didn't work out. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Indeed, and then eventually, once you've learned all the ways that are shit, you basically have the one way that, that is, you know, that's the correct one. As long as we're having fun, it's all good. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Very good, Rod. melted let's try this again let's try this again i suppose that's also good about uh, trying things again and again for me it's all about the practice so sometimes when i see tips 
that I think, hey, this is really good. Uh, for me, it only really works if I do this like 20 times, if I do the same thing, even if it's a very long convoluted process, do it 20 times. That is really the only thing that um, that goes and, and saves it in my brain. What terrible music, I don't like lyrics. Go away lyrics. So, uh, camera is here. We need to go and put that into a track. Actor to sequence, J cam indeed. And camera component we do not want. We just want to mess with the transformation maybe. And also, do we want to pilot it? That is cool. And see where we have a starting position here. So that's got to be somewhere further over here, maybe. Oh, yes. And then also the other thing is we decided on 18 millimeters as a focal length. That is nice. Should we start over here already? Yeah, that's a good starting position, I think. If only I could now lock in those positions, eh? Wouldn't that be nice? So you'd think I click this and that, and maybe that's actually done it. I don't know. Possibly. Let's just hope. So we said that maybe at about frame... I was, what the hell, 800. We had it a bit earlier there last time but I think that might be a bit uh, a bit much so that's that's that now if we go bring location X forward to about here and Z down that's kind of a straight line Yeah, maybe I'll leave it like this. So do the whole location thing. Keyframes everywhere. In fact, that and rotation, perhaps. All of it. Literally all of it. Let me just close it down. I'm just going to hit this button here. This is one for just all the transformations. Key in all the transformations. That's cool. And then we go... Well, we're at the kind of... At that point, maybe... 900, we might be... We might then be... No, actually, sorry, that was, uh, yes, no, it's fine, it's fine, we're good. On 900, we're maybe here. Or something. And then we can add ourselves, maybe we'll give ourselves a thousand frames then. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe something like that. See if it actually works. See if it actually works. Does it? Let me make this here uh, like 1100. There. Just so that we can see stuff. It kind of works from here to there. What's the speed like? Starts agonizingly slow so we'll see if we can move that forward then it goes into something fairly fast I, I wish we could kind of even that out a bit starts faster maybe just like a linear i don't really i don't really need to have that see this is now a bit a bit fast if it could have maintained that speed it's a good speed if i could have that speed throughout the animation that'd be nice and that's now also a bit fast i find so if we could just linearize everything, that would be really good. See if we can make that happen now or later. <laughs> Let's not worry about the speed right now. We're almost good here. I'll just set one keyframe in the middle here. That lets us 
how many out of date packages are there that are constantly save worthy, I wonder. Just want to make sure we keep this in here, in the center. Perhaps this is in fact the way to do it, just, just key in all values that you need. And not do them individually. Maybe that is the way to go. So if at this point I want it to be at the bottom already, see if I can make that happen. Freaking bush, man. <laughs> so go and hit all the transforms. Also take the bush. Let's go delete the bush. Easy. There never was a bush. We like a few bushes, but there's, you know, we don't want too many bushes. So let me see if I can go and hit this now at the beginning. Yeah, this is difficult now because I have to do uh, values here. Really, really small changes, but that's okay. I think I can, I can just finagle that. So this was, what was this? This is in the positive direction. Yes. Okay. So that it's probably plus 50 then maybe, maybe plus 10 more like so, but because I'm I'm going to go and key in the whole transformation thing. Let's see if that's good for us now. Is that cool? We can probably delete the keyframe before that. I don't know if it's going to matter much. There's that. And now we're going to go and do another one just for the exit. At that point, hopefully. Man, are you sensitive. Literally too sensitive to be actually usable. Too sensitive to be usable. So this is now at the minus direction. I'm glad we can do this with the, with the, uh, with the minus and plus. That's really, really helpful. So I'll lock in the whole transformation thing. Let's see if that works. Aside from a little wiggling that we can correct halfway through the bridge, I think. Probably caused by interpolation. I'm sure the line is straight, but the camera doesn't want to go the corners. It probably wants to go like this, you know, just kind of swings, I would imagine. Maybe you should get yourself one of those, Rod. And whenever you feel like it, go and light that candle. Maybe it's going to be good for you. Yes, yeah, so a small wiggle in the in the middle. I don't know if I want to actually correct it. Yeah, I think I should. I should. I'm going to put something here, just another keyframe, and just just correct that little bump there. So I suppose that is now, was it minus, was it minus 10? Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. So minus direction here. And up in the Z, I think Z I'm allowed to control without repercussions. Like so, it's, we could probably fiddle with the rotation, but I think I'll just, I'll just leave that. Yeah, and I think this interpolates out because 
we have too big a change here. I think I want to stay fairly low here any, at this point anyway. So that's kind of a good, good secondary point to make adjustments. Stay low. And while we're here as well, let's go do some rotational things. Uh, not at all what I mean. Yeah, maybe we'll go through this hole and then we'll, we can correct the, the end position. And maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. So whole transform thing. How does that work? Yeah, almost, almost works. Doesn't quite, because at this point we're too far over to the left. Okay, let's see if we can correct that. At that point we're too far to the left. So let's go and, oh my, this is just not good, is it? Was that plus now? I think this is, was this plus 50? Let's try plus 50. Whole transform. Not enough. 50 was not enough. Also, good question. Has that auto keyed it in now? It's fine. I'm all right with it. Yeah, so this, we need to change the next one. And so this, if I want to stay loud, down low, then this one is probably too high uh, already. And this one is okay. Perfect. Let's go and get rid of all these. I want to stay low until about here, I think. So that's just Z, I think, then. I could even go underwater. That might be nice. See if that looks cool. Just a test could seriously look terrible, but you know, you never know if you don't try it out. Oh yeah, that we might want to avoid. <laughs> okay, forget the underwater thing then. Let's just make it higher. We can be here and then maybe just look up at the at the logo as well. Haven't really thought about rotation much. Oh, and rotation wasn't keyed in. Ah, oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Still going too far down. Not good. Let's go set this this whole value up again somehow differently if i go if i'm here just to get this navigate the camera out from uh, from there man this is really pretty janky <laughs> i think is the word And the trees are once again in, in the most awkward position. Could just go grab them, grab these trees and just move them over. But of course, there's too many of them. There we go. This, these are them. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably more hassle than it's worth. What else can we do? Not be, not be low. That's a possibility. Or just go remove one of these bushes. Like this guy. Bush be gone. You also, you. Little mini foliage guy. Oh, you're part of foliage, so I can't get rid of him. But let's see. Maybe that one that one thing has already helped. Yeah, perfect. So all I need to now make sure is that I just steer to the right a little bit. Maybe that'll help. So at this point, maybe I should just, maybe I just need to be further on the, 
on the right. Oh no, it can't because last time I changed that position, that affected the previous position. <laughs> oh, crazy stuff. What a terrible puzzle. What have I been... What have I got myself into here? Okay, let's see if we can make this something like that. That's nice. Z, Z position. Z, Z. Let's have a, let's have a gentle fiddle with the Z values. And also look up ahead to here. That might help. And go key in all the transforms. There, no one saw that. That's nice. And now we're approaching this and then we we all have lemonade. The end. Perfect. Okay, tree stays, foliage gone. Okay, so now all we need to then do, I suppose, is make sure we look at the fountain. So that's the only thing that isn't working. Currently everything's cool, except for that at this point here, we need to somehow look at the fountain. So I think I might make three keyframes, one here, and I'll just key them before we do anything. So I'll go put one here. Then I'll put one kind of in the middle here, I suppose. Notice I'm keying all the keyframes, all the possible options. And then one kind of here, I suppose. Um, well, even further back, like here. That's cool. So let's make put one here. And then the only thing I'm going to do is go over to the previous one and change where I'm looking, namely at the beautiful water feature. That should kind of do the trick, hopefully. No, because rotation doesn't get locked in when you just do the... Oh, <laughs> you're testing my patience here. There, we're looking at the beautiful water fountain and go and hit freaking keyframe button millions of times that perfect that should have done that perfect we're interpolating like crazy we do this and then we do that and nothing is screwed up hey that's nice i think we're almost there i think we're almost there maybe the only other thing i'd like to make a little bit more interesting is the, this approach here when we go down here i think that's nice we could maybe test what it looks like if we look left and right a little bit here. Maybe just before we turn right to the fountain, we could go left at the house. Just uh, just so that it's that there's a little bit of camera looking movement in there. Much like with that as well, I think when I come down there, I'd like to look further right, just in preparation of where we're heading, I think. But that is not so bad, I must say. That is, that is not bad at all. Let's try this again. Oh, come on. Okay, here we go. Let's preview it in full screen. And do ignore the, the thing. I can live with that. That is nice. I can live with that. Nailed it. Ooh, ha, ha, excellent. It was worth redoing it because it's there comes a point where you have too many keyframes and that doesn't work. So yeah, absolutely, Brian. Woohoo, nailed it. And I think it was your tip that actually really drilled it home. Make sure you select, you, you key all these things. I think that's, that's very important. All right, save now, even though autosave is already saving stuff. Goody. Let's go quickly make that happen. It's file, save all. Because there's auto save, but there's also your manual save, and somehow they're different. We're getting there, we're getting there. And you know, it was this only an hour and a half so far. Remember yesterday, after an hour and a half, all we had was a loaded project. <laughs> that was uh, Gresi, man. 
So yes, there's this that I thought we can probably at this point here. Yes, and I think that is exactly what I'll do at this point, at this keyframe. I'm going to make sure the camera is already looking towards that. That is the only change I'm going to make here. Lock in all the transform values. And that shouldn't really have changed much other than just the position that we're already looking ahead at the logo. Nice. Yes, I like it. I like it. So now that the beautiful water fountain thing has worked so darn well, there's this house here that I just like to have a quick look at. And I suppose just when we come, just when we come out here, I really like this, this whole smooth motion that we come and look at this. I think now I'd like for the camera to just point to the left a little bit. So leave everything until now in place. So go and grab another transformational keyframe there. And we know that at that point, we're also good already and moving over there. So perhaps just in the middle here, we're just going to go and rather than focus on the, on the trash can, we're going to move on, focus onto this all the transforms see what that's gonna be like terrible or okay-ish from here we look at that we just quickly zoom and look around yes look at that just that that extra bit of extra bit of niceness there i'm even considering once we've looked at the water fountain we can probably go quicker to this location here I think we're looking at that a little bit too long. So there's, we're looking at it, that's all cool, but now I think we take too much time on this. There's nothing to see here. We need to woo the audience. And if there's nothing to see, we need to at least make sure we go and uh, move these keyframes over to here. I'll see, I'll see how that goes. This could be terrible. No doubt about it. Beautiful water fountain. There we go. And then we maybe that was a bit too fast. Yeah, that was a bit too fast. Let's go make that a little bit slower. But in principle, that's nice because now we're looking ahead at this thing. So it gives the viewer a little bit more chance to absorb. Oh my God, we're going through there. I think that might work better. All right. 3D shenanigans. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> finally got there finally so i think i'll go and so but we can we can export this now as a video and it'll all it'll work it'll work well it'll it won't do it won't take a second but i'm debating whether to change the animation speed in some way so we're starting really slow i like this speed I wonder if I want to slow it down some more towards the end. So this is all okay. Or if we're actually okay with that. I think I might, I might be okay. I might be okay with this. This, I might make that whole thing a bit slower so that we just sit on the logo and pan around the logo a bit longer. Actually, but the rest, I don't think the beginning is too slow at all. I can always cut later to the animation. So I might actually just leave that because it's a nice, it's just a nice opener getting into it. So then the next thing I'd like to do is, especially by the logo, especially over there, also here by the playground maybe, I'd like to take some of these unreal guys and see if the ai behavior works during the animation and if also if so if this works that like unreal guy i'd like for him to literally walk up and down the bridge that's that's my that's my plan and i think i'd like to try that and see what uh, you know see see if that works mewoodles excellent thank you so much for following i appreciate that 
So this is this is great success for me. This is awesome. This is seriously cool. I'm going to stop piloting the camera and go back into the regular 3D view here and see if I can. This is what this this Unreal guy here. He has automated behavior added to it. I think this so because I've reused this project, there's several nav meshes in here already and a spawner too. So I'm going to go and, and have a look for those nav mesh bounce volume. So I'm going to go and take that away. I don't need it anymore. Then there's another one called the spawner. And the spawner, that's just an object that I've created that drops in so many Unreal guys over a period of time. And I don't need to have that anymore in there either. I don't really want that. But the this guy here, he is kind of capable of AI behavior. So I'll go and see if we can add a nav mesh bounce volume on top of this bridge. And then we can see if he will actually, you know, honor that. <laughs> Was it in volumes? Yes, I think so. Let's go and search for it. It's nav mesh bounce volume. That's it. So let's pop that here. Where are you? This guy, there we go. That's him. That's totally him. Let's make him a bit bigger. I can't actually see him. It's because I don't have my things enabled here. That's fine. So that's him. And I think we'll go and rotate him to something like that. And then we'll go and extend him this way. So this thing is an invisible volume that makes AI people... Uh, walk so if if they are somewhere inside that they can pick places inside this volume to walk i think p will enable this green that's it nice reflection on the water there look at that that's that's very cool so we're not going to see that it's just so that i can see uh yeah he can walk over here i don't really want him to do that i want him to be just on the on the bridge so let's make that a little bit less less extended uh hello there we go takes a second for unreal engine to rebuild the the mesh that's cool so that's that's nice maybe i don't even want it to walk all the way over here i might just go and make that a bit uh, a bit thinner because we're not going to see that we're only going to ever see him kind of in this direction and i'd like for him to be in motion there so i think and i really can't tell you if i play the project now he will probably walk but we're not gonna ever play the project we're only ever gonna um render this or so maybe simulate is gonna do the thing give it a second yes there we go simulate has the guy walking sadly he's walking in place so that's not exactly it's not exactly awesome I wonder why that is. He's walking at a random speed as well, and it's nice. But he looks like he's not really walking forward. Hmm. <laughs> What's happened here then? Maybe. I don't think my logo has uh, has assets attached, so it shouldn't really collide with anything. But let's see if that is if that is in fact enabled there. Physics. Not physics, enable gravity, it shouldn't really matter. Collision doesn't generate... Can character step on it? Right, right, we're going to say no. And I think then we're going to have to go and do this again. I don't think that does that. Oh dear, what's happened here? Mobility of game yada yada, static mesh component zero has to be movable if you'd like to move. Oh, are you not movable? Pull of dude. You're not movable? Well, let's let's try this again. Let's try it again first of all. See if he's see if he's, he's all right without the logo doing anything. Can you move? No, you can't. Dang, brother, that's cold. I'll go move the logo up a little bit. Well, it doesn't even work. Oh, it's because I'm still simulating. <laughs> Static mesh component needs to be movable. Is it is it this potentially? Let's make this movable. Because we do want the guys to walk around, that'd be nice. And it's not that. 
at least we don't get the error message anymore. I'll lift it up a bit, quite a lot actually. And let's see if this has an effect on the poor little guy. <laughs> Charles Caliber, thank you so much for subscribing. I appreciate that, my friend. Come on, Unreal Guy, you can do it. Walk with us. You've done it in the Western Project. Yes, there we go. So it was the logo. He got stuck in the logo. Well, that is difficult now because we've set up the camera to look at the logo properly, didn't we? This is this this is this isn't good. What we can also do, and no one's going to actually realize this, we're going to put the logo back and we're going to make Unreal Guy smaller. How about that? Maybe just make his physics components smaller. Like scale the whole guy down. I don't think we can, we can tell. Let's make him smaller. Will this work? Because that would mean our camera animation is still set up correctly and we can just, you know, live with that. And then he's just a little smaller. Hey, that's all right, buddy. Super nice. And they can be larger when we're at the back there. That's not, pro that's not, a, that's not a big thing. <laughs> Righty. So before we set up the other guys, I'd like to just, um, I might just clone him a few times here. So he has friends, you know, so Alt, drag him out, move him in different places. Alt, drag him out as well. And we can, we can by the time we get to see them, they'll be rotated anyway. So I'll, I'll make him, you know, three friends hanging out on the bridge. That's going to be all right here. Three of you, there we go. All have different ideas, walking at different speeds, walking different places. It's gonna hopefully gonna be nice. So what I like to try now, I'll leave the simulation on for this. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well save this thing, save all, and then I'm gonna go and animate a whole thing out. And hopefully by the time we get to see the end, we will see that the guys are walking on the bridge. So this is what I'd like to see if this actually works. It might fall down at any moment. Render this movie to video or image sequence. Well, let's try. We'll, we'll stick with 30 frames. We'll stick with um, 1080 by 720. And we're going to turn this into a video. And uh, no audio. Perfect. Usually there's some kind of button that I press and it just goes and does it. I wonder what, I found, what have I forgotten? Is it... Uh, it's, we can put it in here. That's I'm, I'm good with that. That's the folder. Do we think of it a file name or something? File name, format, world, ick, whatever, dude. Animation. Um, oh, I know why it doesn't work. It doesn't work because we haven't cut to a camera. That's why this thing is grayed out. We need to specifically cut to a camera. We only have one, but there's this thing at the top here, the camera cut track. That is what we just need to, we just need to at least have one cut. All I need to go is make sure I select my camera. That's J cam, J cine camera actor. I thought it was like J cam or something. Cam. J cam instance. Isn't that what we want? camera let's cut to a camera namely j cam all right boom now we have this top strip here and i think that's it's kind of important to have that i understand and now we still can't do it that's interesting isn't it hmm but why i wonder if you i or do i care that's cool i don't i don't really mind audio i don't really mind either custom frame rate well man just make it work 30 is good for me Oh, absolutely. 100% agree with that. <laughs> Don't use Das Central. Das Central is their idea of what the epic 
thing and the steam launch and all those types of things that's what they want ideally they want one thing that all that runs all the time on your computer that they can shove any advert at any moment in the day with notifications in the bottom right down your throat no matter if you want to see it or not that's what they ideally what they want to do and so das central is more important for das than it is for you as long as you can use install manager use install manager it's a really simple quick tool and yeah das central forget about it man Yeah, that is bizarre. Is that why can't I? Why can't I? Why can't I export that? Is it maybe because I'm in simulation mode? Is that is that already the problem? If I go out of that, can I export it now? Yes, now I can do capture movie. Well, that's uncool because that means we won't be able to see the unreal guys walking around. They're just now going to stand there like lemons. But it's cool. We'll go capture the movie anyway. And yes, safe selected. That's cool. So that's that's kind of answers my question then. That I suppose these guys walk around in real time. And I suppose maybe an animation is something else. Next thing I'd like to then see is does the foliage move in the animation? Because that's also a real time effect. This is it rendering now. It doesn't show you the whole picture for some reason. It only shows you a cropped version of the top left corner there. So it's the framing looks off, but it's only it doesn't show you the full thing right now. Can't tell if the foliage is moving yet. We'll probably see it in the water effects. Yes, there we go. So that works. Okay, that's good to know. That is very good to know. Oh yeah, they've hidden it well, haven't they, Rod? They've hidden it so well on the website now because they don't want you to use it. It would be so nice if the Unreal guys would just walk. That would be seriously cool. Or maybe they do, I don't know. We'll find out. So this was the rendering process. Took how long? Oh, it's still, it's still doing it. It's still doing it basically saving the file i guess the guys were moving <gasps> really oh my god brian this is gonna be so cool i'm glad we could keep you company rod still saving the video the rendering is actually done it's now assembling it into a video that takes longer than the actual rendering process isn't that crazy now we're done perfect so this is in a change to a source content file has been detected. Would you like to import it? I never did nothing about nothing. Yeah, okay, cool. Import it. I don't know. Is this going to screw everything up? Importing new assets, City Park. I hope, I hope not. Can you imagine the dudes released an update? Yeah, we're just going to go and download 11 terabytes of stuff, Jay and then install it over the next 11 weeks. Hopefully not. AI Patrol. Is it in saved? It did tell me, and of course I didn't really... I didn't really... Does anyone remember where I put that? <laughs> where do you say this? In AI Patrol, in content... In, in, in content, are you sure? Okay, it's... I don't think that's a good idea, but okay, fine. It's definitely the correct project. That's nice. Unreal projects, AI patrol, and it accidentally went into content. Yeah, it shouldn't really be in there. Okay, I get you. This is it. Let's see if what it looks like. So this is with compression, so it doesn't look great. But I'll import it, I'll export it as an image sequence, and then I have the full res versions. Things are moving. Nice music. Oh yeah, Unreal Guys spawned. I need to take that out as well. Very important. And the guys are moving. Oh my god, the guys are moving! Oh, that is so cool! That is exciting, isn't it? Oh my god! 
We're going to plaster that bridge with Unreal guys who will keep moving and we'll, we'll stay on the logo and we'll just, we'll just sit there with the camera and let the guys move. So I'll maybe give it another 10 seconds at the end or at least five so we can see Unreal guys walking up and down. And it also means we can then go and put other moving Unreal guys all through the park by the fountain. And oh my God, this is exciting. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. And the foliage was moving as well. Yes, I can see the trees moving. And it also it, it answers another very interesting question, namely that the 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 thing that I've put in the bottom left corner where it says Unreal Guys spawn, that is a widget. So when you render out an animation, those widgets that usually would only be part of the real life gameplay are are also there. That is unbelievable. Like partners, they're just patrolling the bridge. Oh my. That is so cool. Let's set up the rest of the stuff with the thing and oh my god, that's amazing. It's gonna be another 20 minutes worth of work and then we have it nailed, friends. Is that cool or what? That is exciting. Ah, so first things first. The, the widget. We're gonna deal with the widget later. Let's put, let's clone some of these guys clone a whole fleet of them in fact can i select shift select them that is exciting and go all to do this hey that is that's probably the wrong that was the wrong uh, thing oh yeah that was also that's not a good idea let's let me let me clone them one by one okay fine i'll clone you all one by one no problem So alt click and move you over here. By the time we'll see them, they will be in, in different places already. So I'm not gonna be I'm not too bothered rotating them properly because that's that's all gonna have happened by that uh, by that point. Groovy, that's these guys sorted. That should be enough for the bridge. <laughs> Let's go over to the playground here. I think they may have, they may be walking a few of those guys over here as well, I'm thinking. Playground area. Let's drag another math mesh bounce volume in here. Make it a bit bigger. Like so. That might even be too big. Because we're not actually going to see this area over here. We're only going to see this area. Yeah, that's might just add a little bit of life there. So the guys, I think they are in... Uh, in blueprints and in AI and this guy's called enemy character. I know it's a shame because he's not really the enemy. He's our friend That's that little area that he can walk in that might actually not be not be that 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 big maybe I'll make it a bit bigger Like so And I just need to make sure he goes, he's, he, he's in there. One guy's over here and then there's another one over here maybe. And then another guy over here. And perhaps, in fact, there's a, there's a couple over here. And maybe another one over here. There. All right, guys. Perfect. <laughs> you know what to do. Walk around. Have fun with it. And the same thing, I guess, over here. I think I like the idea that we go into the park and we don't see anyone moving. And then we see... Whoops. Texture streaming pool. 10 megabytes over budget. Whoops. Instant crowd. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> White clunky uniforms. That'd be good. So maybe just here. 
I'll put a few a couple of nav mesh bounce volumes here. Maybe actually maybe just one large one. Or just a couple of small ones. One goes here. Could have sworn that's much larger, <laughs> but I guess it's not. There we go, that's nice. And then I'll just go and uh, duplicate that. So Alt, click, move it over here. Oh, where is it now? It's telling your ski. It's because, it's because, there, it's Alt, click and drag over here. It's trying to rebuild the nav mesh as we do that. And that takes a little bit of time. So you can see it also acknowledges, that's where the depth comes in. It also acknowledges things like stairs. So these guys will be able to walk up and down the stairs, which is great. What I did forget, however, is that it needs, uh, it needs to penetrate the ground a little bit. I don't know if I've done that properly. So these guys we may encounter at the beginning. I'm going to give them a little bit of a rotated position here. Every time I rotate him, he gets a new... He, he takes on a new um, skin color. That's because I've set this randomization up in the construction script of the guys. I can show you the logic in a moment just for completion. Also for my own memory, where did I actually set that? And we'll look at the fountain at this point so we don't need to put anybody over here. I just want to make sure if I go and simulate this now, I just want to make sure these guys are all moving before we render this out again. You're moving? Yes, you are. At least down here, that's cool. Looking at the fountain, yeah, have, have fun guys. You should hang out in the park more often, this is nice. And then over here, yep, looks like we have quite a few people walking around. This is exactly where you guys need to be because when the camera comes, we need to, we need to, you know, you guys need to be on your best behavior and no shooting people. Or no standing around doing nothing. That's also not good. Meanwhile, our guys on the bridge, you guys are on duty. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah, it's a popular destination for tourists here. Good stuff. So then the only other thing is the menu here. I, I got to be brutally honest. I don't remember where I put that or how I added that. I really can't remember. Probably in the level blueprint. Could that be it? That might that might be something that I might be. I might do that. Level blueprint. It may be in there. Totally simulating. Uh, it's not in the level blueprint, I don't think. Didn't do it in the level blueprint. Okay. Then, then, then where then? <laughs> what else do we have? We've got the hut. We've got the third person character, but it isn't that. Is it in the game mode? Did I set it there? In class settings. No, hot classes that, so I didn't set it there. Yes, this is actually where I did that. So in the game mode. Ha! Huh, that's why that's showing up. Perfect. So this is how I've set up the counter. I can just go and um, break that line. And now the logo is gone. That's good, I think. If we simulate, we don't see the logo anymore, right? We only see walking guys. Come on. Yes. No more logo. Good stuff. That is good. And social distancing, of course, Rod, yes. Super important. Alrighty, so that's that. The guys are, are walking. Uh, I think, ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to 
render another pass of this. Perhaps I'll do 1920 by 1080 this time. Because it only takes four seconds longer. Might as well do it. Oh no, the other thing I wanted to do is leave the... Just capture more frames at the end. Let's make it 1400 frames in total. And just drag that line there. This is just so that we can see the guys... Um, that we can see the guys walking. So this then also needs to be extended up until the end here. There's just that that camera cut so that we know there's enough frames until that point. If it's not exactly 1400, that's also okay. I just want to make sure this is doing that when we go Pilot JCAM. Just want to make sure it captures the additional frames. I can see the water moving. Yes, so it, it'll do that. Sometimes if you don't extend the camera cut track, it doesn't do that. And we're, we're capturing everything until about 1400. That's cool. Alrighty. Bring it on. Go over here. We, yeah, let's make it 1920 by 1080. And the compression, I'll leave the compression. That's cool. There's another field at the bottom down here that lets me that lets me set how much I'd like to capture. So I can either use the start and stop, or I can just manually say I like to I like it from frame one to frame 1400. So then it'll only do this. Alrighty, perfect. Capture. So actually, yes, do save everything, but also make sure this doesn't go into into content. There was a better place to put this, namely into, was it saved? I'll just put it into a top level folder in the project and I'll just call that one videos. I think that'll just be so that these things are in, in one place, you know, there we go. Auto saving out of date packages. This be be a good idea to to literally take a stopwatch and see how how long it takes to um, to capture that. Well, let's do it without a stopwatch. Save selected. If you do have a stopwatch, start it now and let me know at the end how long it actually took for the thing to uh, export. Not counting the the saving packages here and. Stop, watch, go. Here we go. Rendering beginning now. And as I said, the framing is weird because we're only seeing the cropped top left-hand corner of the, of the actual thing. So it looked much, much more, much more presentable later. Time to get another coffee. Yeah, so what I tend to do then for the final pass is I, I don't use the capture to AVI. That's just because we can then look at it better. I tend to not use compression. I render out a PNG image sequence, usually then at 60 frames. So you can override the frame rate upon export as well. You don't have to, you don't have to work in 60 frames. Kind of 30 frames is easier for me to think in. And then we'll just go and uh, assemble that in Premiere and use decent compression with that. And, Badger Weasel, thank you so much for following. I appreciate that. Welcome to the Star Crew on Twitch. This is how long it took you, but you know, at the same time, Brian, it didn't actually take you all that long. Do you remember you only started, uh, maybe was it two weeks ago that you tentatively started sculpting? Look at how much you've learned, and now you've got all the assets in place that let, me, that let you set up the book cover. This is great. I'm seeing that this takes a little bit longer to render its things than my other project, the Urban Future, that rendered even faster. 
and also um, if on your tax return if ever you have to uh, give a quote as to how much it costs you to do this well there's you know not only all the software subscriptions that you now a proud owner of Clo for a year you also inv invested into a tablet so there's there's that as well that's all goes into the production of the book cover doesn't it i like it so rendering is technically finished if any of you have had a stopwatch there what was that two minutes I have a counter right in front of me. I could just literally have looked at the beginning, but of course I didn't. I don't know if this technically counts as rendering because this is now compositing time. And image capture, if you had an image series, this the, that actually goes faster. And it'll also not do this, so this is all finished at that point. But I suppose he's compressing it and, you know, doing things in the background and rejigging stuff. I'm looking forward to the finished cover. I'm really enjoying getting all your little updates of, you know, bits and pieces. There's a strangulation plant that we saw today. That was kind of crazy. I'm looking forward to what you're making with that. I have a feeling, Brian, you may even turn that into a small animation. I don't know. Come on. There we go. Dansky. All right, are you ready for the world premiere of the HD animatic of City Park? I'll go and copy, I'll maybe take this one. This is the old version. I'll, I'll just go and call this, I don't know, version one maybe. And I'll put that into the top here because it shouldn't really be in, in content. I'll put this into videos. And this one is now City Park version two. And they've exported the, the web file independently from that. So that's really nice. So I can go and these are like birds chirping and all that. So it's kind of ambient sound that's part of the package. Alrighty, here it goes. Here it goes. Foliage, shadows, unreal guys walking around. Kind of a neat effect here. Could get some more people at the on the outside of the fountain. This is kind of nice. Could even expand the unreal guys over here. That might be a nice touch. And there's a lot of people on the bridge, which is great. And then we stop, but the action doesn't stop. You guys should really keep walking there. Very good, yeah. Very nice. The water keeps going and everything keeps going. So that is, I like that. I really like that. That's nice. And we're going to cut out before that anyway, so. Hey, not bad at all. Very cool, huh? I love it as well. So yeah, I like this without people. That's nice. I'm okay that we see the people in the background. That's cool. This guy's walking on air. I like to see some more people on the other side of the fountain here. I think that'll be nice. And here, I think we just need a few more people, uh, maybe towards the end and on this walkway here. And then we're there. It's debatable if I wanted to keep the camera action going here. So if I just make it a very subtle, slow pan at the end, I might do that. I might do that. Because I like this, but I think it would be even cooler if we had an extremely slow camera just keep keep panning around this, you know, so that we just basically, this whole uh, last section here, this, when we approach this, that's nice, but then we eke this bit out, this whole bit. We just go and make that really, really slow, extremely slow. Especially this, this slight zooming out. I just make that extremely subtle so that we just keep it going here, I think. All the while, hopefully, Unreal guys are going to walk up and down. This being a real-time animation, the position of the Unreal guys next time is going to be different because it'll be randomized, I suppose, upon execution. Just a tiny bit, right? That we keep this, that the camera isn't frozen, that we just keep it going. Yeah, let's do that. I like it. Yeah. 
In fact, perhaps we'll start there. Because it's not really that uh, that difficult. We have this going. We've got this approach. I like this here. I also like this and I like that. But perhaps we go and drag this out until maybe 1200. 1300 even. Let's do 1300. And then we go and we take, well, not all of these. I'm just going to take all of these, move those over to, oh yeah, like this, like to 1300. And these guys then, why did that happen? I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> this I'm going to go and move just further over here as well, so that that's a bit slower. Let's see if we need anything else. Yeah, that's uncool. So we're going to go and put a put a different one in there. That's a shame that we can't that we can't just do that. That's that's uncool. Let me go and get rid of that then. We need to get creative again. Keyframecreativity.com. So we do this, this is all right, and all this is also cool, but of course in the middle here, before we go there, we need to go and, and make sure we're looking at the correct uh, spot here. I don't want this to screw up like it, like it does. I don't really want that. So the logo needs to be in the middle and we need to have that happen at this point here. No worries. Uh, location and ro no why did you do that and rotation why did why would you do that that's that's uncool maybe is it that we need to go rotation first and then location no oh, maybe that's that's actually yeah but it's also not the position that I want is it duh <laughs> rotation and location That does this. Keep it there, just keep it moving, keep it moving. While we see Unreal guys walking. And then why it does this, I'm not entirely sure. Because that's not really, I mean, it's it's okay. It's just not really what I, what I want. <laughs> Nor is it what I, what I thought was gonna happen. I don't really want the camera to stop there. nor fizzle out like that. That's just, you know, that's, that's screwy, man. We could just cut out here. That might be an option. Also, what is with the music? This is, this is certainly doesn't sound like anything I wanted to listen to, but thanks. <laughs> there. Yes, I see. We can probably then just go get rid of this and maybe just elongate that a little bit. Is that, could we do that? That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's kind of cool. I like that. Just so that there's a little bit of camera animation while we see the Unreal guys walking. So yeah, I think that I can live with that. And then we'll make it until 1200. Yeah, that's, that's cool. So 1200, so that's a good, that's a great finish here goody so then whole thing then approach from here fantastic subtle and we can see the unreal guys doing their thing that's perfect hot dog vendors united all right so a little bit of extra additional background action and i think I think that's it then. Ho, oh, how exciting. <laughs> Perfecto. So yes, over here, you guys, you're doing great. Just once more with feeling. <laughs> I think we can probably pick up the nav mesh bounce volume that's in charge here. That's probably this one. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. So I'll just go and grab, just clone this. Drag it over here. 
Oh, that was the wrong direction. So sorry. And when they intersect with one another, then they basically continue. Yeah, maybe I'll make it a separate one. They don't have to overlap. I mean, it would be... I, I can probably just go drag this guy into that. Because mainly we want we want this to be the the thing that makes the the unreal guys walk on the path here. I don't think they can go in the water. I'm just I'm just thinking perhaps we should make sure that it doesn't happen by default. <laughs> Uh, like so. Yeah, don't step into the water, guys. You know you can't swim. Well, be an interesting scene. Interesting. Just an interesting thing to see, wouldn't it? So let's go and shift select a few of these guys. Alt drag them over here. That's that background action we were talking about. More of you over here. And then you, you're going to be the model citizen for the people who walk on the, on the pavement. With lots of your friends. Yeah, so some of you should go over here. Instant crowd, indeed. I suppose the other thing that we've got going for us is that this isn't real time, so it doesn't actually matter if the performance is lagging. Unreal Engine will just take a little bit longer than to, to calculate each frame, but we're okay with that. This here is now, hello, is this not an mesh bounce volume? This one here, perfect. So let's go clone that as well. Over here, maybe even just make that one wider, like so. We could even just go get rid of this. I just use this this whole thing here. There, that should be good. Nice, and then we need people, of course. Like you, sir. There. Friday. Let's see how that works. Will this be enough? Let me just go and quickly simulate this just so we get a little impression of do we have enough people at the back there? Yep. 
A lot of guys over here, but not that many at the back. Perhaps enough though. Maybe I'll just move them around a little bit. And then we have you guys here. It'd be really nice if you guys could be on the path. So he's now wandering in the bushes. So I don't really want that to happen. I'll narrow this down a bit so that they don't walk off too much. Yeah, here as well. I don't want you to be there. I want you to just be on the path. He's in the water now. Yeah, we need to avoid that. <laughs> he's going swimming. Now, we don't want to have that happen. <laughs> It just means that there's more people that we can actually see and they go, they do weird things. So yeah, I'll go, I'll go and I'll tweak that math mesh, make it a bit more accurate. I wonder, I wonder which one's which then. You this? No, you're that. It's gotta be one of these. No, that's not it either. This one is also... That's that. And then this one is that. This one is that. I could just name them. But hey. <laughs> yeah, I see. This is this is the whole thing, isn't it? Is this, this is the whole thing. Come on, do your thing. That's the wrong one, wasn't it? I totally forgot to. I should really name those. Hey, Mr. Slaymore, how you doing? We've had a successful day in the city park. That was very cool. I'm going to go rename those things here. This one's now... Nav, can't I do that? Oh, here. Nav Bridge. Nav Bridge has in fact renamed, but this hasn't this is not showing me that in the in the outliner here. Why not? Do I have to go and say rename here? No, I can't. Why can't I change the label? Dang brother! Why not? Very good to see you again. How have you been? Thanks for joining us. We're nearly done. We're nearly done. I can show you actually since you have since you're here. Let me show you what I've just rendered in about what was it? Two minutes. Very, very cool stuff. This is what I'm just currently tweaking. This is version two of our city park animation there it is so this is a keyframe animation made with the engine and was a little bit cumbersome to get the camera pan the right way done but yeah this is what we've been able to do uh, we've just added a bit more background action here with the people and stuff and then we go into here Adding more people into the background here. Just making sure they don't fall into the water, which is currently what happened. And then we land at the logo. Ha ha ha. And there's more people walking. Sadly, they're stopping. And we've extended that camera move a little bit so that there's more subtle animation going on here. But yes, city park animation. So in a moment, we will have an updated version of that. And we can do all this while we, while we chat. That's just, that is just unbelievable. So this is the nav mesh that is causing a slight issue. It is going, it's making the guys go into the water and we don't want that to happen. That's not that. This is... This one is the one nav fountain, I'd say. And then we have this here. That is also nav fountain. So at least we have some of these things. Fountain, this is bridge. And this is the only one that's left. So I don't really know why it isn't going away from the water here. 
because if I rotate it, it looks like the green square, which is where the actual navigation is happening, that isn't actually moving. So I don't know, I might just go get rid of this and just recreate it. And just keep taking this guy here, which is the one, is this the one at the playground? Yeah, this is the one at the playground. I'll just call it playground. And then I'll go clone this. As soon as Unreal Engine is back, letting me do things. Uh, there we go. I'll just go, whoops, no, no, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to say alt click. And then we'll just move that closer to here and make sure it doesn't go in the water. And again, Yeah, there's, there's got to be a way also to make different shapes other than just square. So that is one thing that I haven't figured out yet, how to do that in Unreal Engine. Maybe one day, because I know that you could, there's got to be a way to just make the nav mesh follow the path without it going anywhere else. But I have no idea how to do that, because the only thing that I can currently import here is the nav mesh bounce volume that's a, a cube. And that is it. I don't know how to change that into something, you know, better, more appropriate. So that should kind of do the trick here. These guys, they're, they're walking over here. That's nice. We can maybe grab a couple of them. And just move them over here. Just so that it looks like there's a bit of, there's a bit of action going on on the path here, on the footpath. Whoops, where are you now? He's gone. <laughs> Come back here. There, that's that's where you are. Cool. Come on, we're going over, going over kind of over here. Yeah, join your friend. There we go. You also, you should uh, yeah, drop down to the floor. This we don't really, we don't really worry about. We don't really want it all over here. Oh, now you're not on the mesh. So that's. That's uncool. There you go over here then. Perfect. Do the same over here. See if, if we have enough people at the towards the back here. We've got a lot of people at the front here. And that's nice, but I think I'd like to see more of you. Like maybe all of you here. Go over further over here. Is that cool? I think I've just destroyed something rather important. Let me just go control Z that. <laughs> yeah, I think I've just moved some geometry here that I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> there, fountain is a back. As I was saying, you guys, you and you and you maybe you guys could come over here just towards the back here something like that if that's okay with you there there's definitely captain there's definitely that overhead of learning how to how to do it poor rod was stuck yesterday saying hey i bought this park environment or oh, got it got it for free essentially but now what it's an interesting question i think uh, somebody else had asked that on our discord uh, about well i got i picked up all the freebies and what, what do i do now where where are they where are the obj's can't i use them in a different program and you think yeah that's the first hurdle <laughs> I'm going to go do another render here and see where we are now. And this is from 0 to 1200. Let's do that. 
quality was okay. I think we can we can probably live with the smaller resolution just to speed up the, the render even further. And at the very bottom here, I'll just render this to 1200. That should be good. And capture movie. All right. <laughs> Isn't it nice that we had control Z? Wasn't that, which operating system was it? Oh, this is a trick question here. Which operating system or 3D software was it that didn't have an undo function until fairly recently? Do you know? Because undo, hey, why would we ever want to undo something? I mean, it's like, you know, whatever. It's just, you, you always do it right, don't you? Blender is the correct answer, Brian. Absolutely. <laughs> 10 points. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was, of course, Blender. Because, hey, we're artists. We're perfect. You don't understand. That's, you know, that's, that's your problem. If you have to use undo, it's your problem. It's not Blender's fault fake user i love it <laughs> isn't it i find it like me too captain i think this is just so so cool collaborate on things give input and just you know code yourself and say hey we'll meet tomorrow again and you do this i do that this this you know oh with Git version control. <laughs> Who cares about COVID? We have each other. We have 3D. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Unreal Engine, for rendering it this fast. Crazy good. So I'll go and make a 4K version of this and put it on my 3D shenanigans channel as an animatic. And I'll do it with the image as an image sequence then as well. That is actually that's the one that takes more time than uh, than than the actual building the animation. Perhaps we can actually do that now because it's only we've got some minutes left. Maybe we'll do that. Let's let's build the 4K version. I think that takes a while to render out of Premiere. To much like what it takes Unreal Engine to do now, it's the compositing the images into a video file. That's what what takes a little bit of time. So this one is now City Park version 3. All right, here we go. Yes, so let's see if the Unreal guys are all in place the way we want them to be. I can see some action going. That's kind of nice. These guys are wandering around. There, lots of people. The Perfect. That's perfect. I love that. Now we enter this. We come across people by the park. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hopefully we can render that again. That was a thing. It'll only ever happen, you know, once. I thought we would have moved the camera here still. I thought we would have still be in, in camera motion here. That is interesting. Yeah, I, th I thought we had approached this and now we have a whole... Um, there's more motion in what we've made here. I don't know. Let's watch it again. I really like the the way the guys are now dispersed. I also like seeing them here in the overhead view. That's cool. I also like not seeing them here. That's very nice. This is perfect. This this dispersion here. That's nice. This has got to be the best between the guy's legs. That's just awesome. <laughs> yes, and here we got to here. We have another keyframe literally five seconds later in which we now develop this whole camera move. So I don't know, maybe that hasn't come, that hasn't saved it or whatnot. So we're going to have to look into that. But perfect. I'm, I'm happy with the, with the way the 3D guys are in place here. So that's all cool. Do you want? Yes, it's not actually here. Look at that. It's it's not the the keyframes are not where they should be. Let's go and set them up again. <laughs> Cine camera actor one pilot J cam. Yes, yeah, so we do this, and then at twelve hundred, what happened to those keyframes? I wonder. <laughs> 
this and then literally just up to up to here at 1200 all we probably need to do is just zoom out a bit see if we can do that literally just just to about here Uh, maybe not. Maybe maybe just just move it. I don't know. I can't tell. Something like that, maybe. Let's see if that's it. Just keyframe the transformation. We spent quite a bit of work on that. Like you know, now it's, it's screwy again. It's screwing everything up again. Yeah, I, I don't think we want to do that. We're gonna go and delete that and just zoom out. Then maybe. Just add 1200 just do that was that nice that that should be that should be enough this is all about subtlety here location rotation and no you're doing screwy things again unreal engine why stop doing screwy crap that's uncool okay we'll do it we'll do brute force then Oops. All the transformation, and then we'll just go and set another like a counter keyframe like we like we usually do. Oh that doesn't do that that's not so bad. Maybe that's actually that's not so bad. Maybe we'll just do this. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do that? That's nice. It's all about the... I don't know why this screwy thing keeps creeping in at the end. I really am not fond of that. It's really... it's uncool. I think I've just hit the wrong button here. I've hit P on the, on the thing here. I didn't mean to do that. Now I can't undo it. Okay, maybe we'll just go undo that, undo that. Perfect. Yeah, you know the screwiness here? This is okay. I can kind of live with this. And then it goes and does... The... Oh, no, it doesn't do that now. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Fine, then. We're good. We're good. I think. Do that. And just go a bit of subtlety here. That's okay. Yeah, that's just this, this, this awkward mini tweak at the end. I might just be out by then. I could just go and move all these to a little bit later. Oh, come on. A little bit later. I th oh, come on! <laughs> Screwy keyframe junk. There we go. And then I'm actually going to be out before the sc uh, screwy thing still here. Still keeps happening. Okay, fine. I'll leave it like that. I'll leave it like that. <sighs> yes, I'm doing okay. Thank you so much for asking. I'm doing great, actually. I've got a good hobby here. I've got a good hobby going. I've got it's it's all you know. It's all. It's I feel fulfilled, shall we say? It's really. I feel really good at the moment, health-wise. Touch wood. Everything seems to be good as well. I'm a three-year cancer survivor now. That's nice. Shall we do another animatic? Yeah, let's do another animatic. One more animatic before we do the 4K version. What do you think? Might as well do it together with you. That'd be cool. Yeah, so I feel I feel good. How are you doing, Captain? We haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing okay. Health is treating you well. Christina is on the up and up. I don't know if she's still here. She's working hard. She just had a hard drive crash. And that set her back a bit, so she's now working more than she's usually working. You know what Christina's like when she's once she's got her teeth into something, she just she just works. She just sent us a video, lovely video that explains how to import maps from Marvelous Designer into Blender using Node Wrangler. That was cool. So Control Shift T, and it just navigates to the maps and it just goes sets it all up. It's a little bit complex because we need to rename files for that and stuff. But yeah, she she recorded that, and I just noticed the time in the Windows Explorer three in the morning. That's 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 Christina. Thank you so much for doing that, Christina. If you're watching this. 
Yeah, so um, all doing well. Her, her weight's going up. I've been meaning to ask if she has, <laughs> if she has, um, if she got rid of her TPN. That was a discussion that she may have had with her doctor last week. Don't know if that worked well. If they decided, okay, you can go off the TPN for now. Health good, business closed. Try new things. Do you know what they say? God closes a door, opens several others. Indeed, and this is this is why this is such a cool opportunity. Hey, out of work. Oh, that's kind of okay, scary. But look at the time. I can invest. I've got time. A friend of mine refers to himself as a time millionaire, and that is a really really nice way of looking at an opportunity where you have where you just have a lot of time. That's that's great. Time millionaire. Animatic version four. Let's have a quick look. Version 4. Come on, City Park, don't leave us hanging. Exactly, uploads and tutorials. Nicely done, nicely done. Different dispersion. He's even jumping there, that's nice. Yeah, so that's the only disadvantage, I suppose, with doing it this way that you think, hey, this was really nice with the, between the guy's legs, but that's not going to come back again unless another coincidence has it that it will it will do that. There's subtlety in the camera move. Good stuff. And real guys running around. That's cool. Subtle movement. Great. I like it. Let's make it a 4K version, my friends, before we leave for today. And I suppose I can put that in another uh, folder here. So this is going to be a PNG sequence. I think we're also going to go and override the the frame rate and say let's make it 60 frames. Let's make it at 4K and we're going to pop this into a folder here and say this is 4K version 5 I guess. Pop it into here. And uh, and that's that. Let's go capture that movie. So this is now an image sequence that'll be captured. And I have to go into Premiere and, or yeah, I think I have to go into Premiere. Photoshop doesn't like uh, files that are that large. Yeah, so that could take a moment or two. Nah, 30 series card, not for me either. It's uh, I have two 2080s and they're currently in use. One for this computer, the other one for streaming. So it's my streaming card and occasionally rendering if I have to have the other computer render some stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to invest into the 30 series. The, the thing with me and the 30 series is that they may be lost on my hardware. So I have a fairly old computer that it's a it's a beefy one. Absolutely. But it's uh, it's 10 years old, 8 to 10 years old. It's a Z800 workstation. And that doesn't even have PCIe 3. So the 2080 has that. The 30 cards, they have PCIe 4 now. My motherboard doesn't even support that. So even though the card itself might be super fast, I think there's speed limitations on the bus that would literally prevent me from getting that kind of performance out of the card. I have a feeling, you know. So I think I might just skip that 30 series cards. The 20 for me is still a very new thing and it works so well with literally everything that I'm using, including Unreal Engine. I, I don't know where the performance increase would actually be noticeable for me. Everything works super flawlessly for me. And, you know, I think I really need like a top spec computer for four grand to make use of the benefits of that graphics card, to be really honest. It's almost like, you know what the 30 series reminds me of? That it's almost like we're at the point now where we were with CPUs a few years ago. That, I mean, currently CPUs haven't gone much faster. It looks like we can't go much faster than 3 gigahertz maybe on the whole frequency. Otherwise, we'd have like 100 gigahertz CPUs. It doesn't work. You can't, can't, can't do it. 4 is kind of the top maximum that we can that we can do there. At the same time, we're coming to the point where we, we can't go much smaller on the 
on the dies. So there's a point now where we're using CPUs that aren't phenomenally faster than they were 10 years ago and we're, we're kind of we're okay with it but gpus they've they've gone up and faster and better i wonder if we're if we're reaching a similar kind of plateau with gpus fairly shortly i don't know <laughs> yeah we wait for the 50 series i like it by that point of course we'll be established 3d artists and we're going to be getting 40 grand a month easy so <laughs> very funny 4K version captured. Did anyone take notes how long that actually took? I might go and go do this and that and that and go. In fact, let's let's go let's go get different music for this occasion here. I like to get my dreamy beats back. Dreamy beats. Uh, maybe this one here. There. Dreamy Beats. I like it. <laughs> okay, so in Premiere... We'll go and assemble this into a 4K actual video that I doubt we can actually uh, watch because my computer isn't really made for 4K. So 4K, that's good for the upload. So I might just go and build us a, like a... a, a 1080 thing so that we can actually smoothly watch it. That's probably a good idea. Let's do that. New project. Oh, do we have this here? Urban Unreal. I might just go and open this project and just bang it onto that. Urban Future Unreal. It's kind of another animation I did there. So maybe I'll go and create myself a bin. And I'll call that Urban Future, into which I literally put everything. Boom. Okay. And then over here, I'll go and say Import. And that now will be that storage location for Unreal Project. AI Patrol, under Videos, under 4K version 5. I'll select the first one. Pick image sequence and say open. And Premiere is going to treat it as uh, hopefully like an image sequence. So now I can go and say new sequence from clip. And this is now something that probably doesn't move very well because it's huge amounts of data doing the thing here. But I'm looking very much looking forward to that. So instead of calling it City Park, we're going to call it City Park uh, version 5. Control M. Well, with it selected, I guess. Control M. That's perfect. And uh, H.264 is fine at not 4K. Actually, we're going to go and do that in 1920 by 1080 that's right and that's only going to be 25 megabytes that's cool let's put it into well into the same location maybe while we're at it organization is everything is it not ai patrols videos uh, city park v5 boom uh export we don't have to queue that let premier do the heavy lifting Thank you for following Dagoi. Very good. Dagoi, is that, have I pronounced that correctly? I hope I have. Righty, thank you so much for dropping by. Watch out for that 4K video on uh, my 3D shenanigans channel. I'll go and post that there, the animatic. And I'll see if I can come up with something that will incorporate this into my holding loop. Thank you for dropping by, Steve. I might be back tomorrow on Twitch. You never know. Got to drop by to find out. Hmm. Yes, absolutely, Captain. I totally agree. Yes. And it's also, I'm a big fan of using the, the things that are best for a job or quickest for a job rather than 
fudgy things that one app could do but it, it does a bad job at it or it's unintuitive and all that like you know cloth animation is a great example for that the like blender has cloth animation and that's awesome that's really cool but the way marvelous designer does it oh my god that's just a completely different ball game and i'm sure eventually blender might get there but currently it's just so much more fun and easy to do this in Marvelous Designer. Having said that, in Marvelous Designer, you can do lots of things that they've implemented. Like, you know, there's a sculpting tool, there's a remeshing tool that you think, yeah, you could do that. But really, Blender or ZBrush are the better tools for that. So you just pick the tool that, that does a better job at those things. Tell me, Rod, what are you going to do after this stream? It's a process, it's a pipeline. Indeed, yes, I totally agree. Yes. And it is also, I think that's for, for us as as 3D enthusiasts, is that the right term for, for what, what we are? Because we, we are not the professionals, are we? Let's let's be absolutely honest here. I think Christina is a 3D professional, but I think all of us we're just, you know, for us it's like playing a video game, this, isn't it? So <clears throat> I think for us. It's important that um, that we have fun learning the tools, and if something doesn't go well, I think it's also important to acknowledge that and go, "Hey, I'm I'm going to go and and not do this anymore." If you if you were to compare it to a video game, you'd stop playing a game if it's no longer fun. Right, let me have a look. Uh, you're going to do Unreal Engine stuff. Is it Unreal Engine, Unreal Engine, or Unreal Engine? It's okay if it's not, by the way. What I'm thinking too. Oh, do you know, this is an interesting new feature in Twitch. Look at that. That is really interesting. I can see in the chat that you, Captain, say replying to Rochelli, how interesting. I, so they have revamped the chat then. They have really done something, you know, meaningful to the chat. We've noticed that we can now refresh the page and it doesn't remove the chat. It, the, the chat sh stays in the same place. That is kind of cool. Let me try again on my Mac. I'm going to refresh my page here and stream comes back. And more importantly, chat comes back. You all have now different colors. That is one thing, but hey, that's okay. That's okay. And maybe, maybe Blender. Good stuff. Alrighty, here is... It's not quite 4K. I have the 4K source material. But this is our latest version here. I can see some compression artifacts that... That... Premiere has smuggled in there. That's why the file size is just so very small. And hey, what happened there? We had a much, much longer thing to... Oh, I know what happened. Can you guess what happened? It's all great up until here. And look at the smoothness. But then all of a sudden it cuts out. It starts again from scratch. Can you guess what happened here, my friends? I think I have an idea. And that's fine. We'll just go have to tell Unreal Engine to do a little bit more stuff. It'll be all good. Let's do it all again. Let's do it all again. That's the beauty of things like, like 3D stuff. Let's do it all again. I'll tell you what's happened. And we're going to go and uh, make a new folder, in fact, while we're here. Let's say 4K version 6, because we have to render the whole thing again. I'll tell you what's happened. I didn't lose a keyframe. Keyframes are correct. It was your close, though. I have changed the frame rate. So what happened is I went into here, said go render the thing, the thing with the thing. And I'll go and point this to the new folder. I've changed the frame rate. And I did not account for the fact that I told Unreal Engine render this from frame 1 to 1200. Well, now I need to render it to, 12, to frame 2400. That makes sense. 
and now it'll do it all again but this is a good ex good thing to go and get the stopwatch going so my timer here haha my timer here is at pretty much exactly two hours 53 minutes streamed that's cool so let's export 2400 frames uncompressed at 4k and just have a quick look how long that takes so 25300 that's my timer i'll just put that in the chat 25300 start render or retina well it's you know imagine i had start, i'd had typed render <laughs> we'll see how long it takes Yeah, so Rod, um, the the whole the order of things to do is you already have an Epic account. I take it that's cool. Then you install the launcher application. That then uh, that is this thing that just the Epic launcher by default that doesn't show Unreal Engine, but it's the same thing that shows you games as well as Unreal Engine stuff. So it gets a new new tab in Unreal Engine, and that then lets you go and download the engine. And that's about that's kind of. A, 60 gigabyte download or so maybe it's 30 gigabyte download it's kind of 60 gig on your hard drive i think it's it's huge and um that then lets you it depends on the content some content you can add to an existing project stuff that you own other content needs to have a specific project created but you'll either get the option add to project or create project with it and then you can load that and play around with it Okay, I can do that. Yeah, that takes, I think last time I rendered something in 4K, the Urban Future animation, that took 10, 15 minutes just to render, Premiere to render that in, uh, in 40 meg um, data rate. So I'll, uh, I'll let you, certainly let you know what the, what the file size is. We can have a quick look at the folder in a moment with all the pictures in it. Also, by the way, the reason why I'm rendering the whole thing again rather than just the second portion is because this animation doesn't behave like a keyframe animation. So this this behaves it's very much an impromptu process. Once it's kicked off, all the movements of the characters will be rejigged. So if I render the second part, all the characters and the water effects will be in different places and it's not going to go together. Grab dinner, no worries. What is for dinner? Captain, what's for dinner for you? We had some vegetables with burgers earlier. That was very nice. But I, I think it'll be like a sandwich and some crisps, as we call them. Slash chips. Who would have thought we'd we'd see render times like this so currently we're literally three and a half minutes into the render and we're more or less done aren't we i mean we're gonna go pan over the over the lake i like that i like that a lot brian what's for dinner for you today And you back to work tomorrow or are you off for another few days kind of a long thanksgiving weekend i know julia's back to work tomorrow tomorrow by the way is i believe is it the 30th of november so today is the 29th tomorrow is literally the last day on which we can make good on that clo offer for 50 percent off for one year 225 dollars if you're in the market for either marvelous designer or clo know that Clo is technically the better software, has some different features, and it currently is 50% off. Marvelous Design have stopped selling perpetual licenses, so it's subscription only. If you already own a perpetual license, you can upgrade that but if, until version 12, but you cannot buy a new perpetual license. This is also true for Steam license holders, by the way. If you've bought Marvelous Designer on Steam version 9, they've stopped selling that, but they will honor your Steam license and convert it into a standalone license on their website, which will then also give you the option to upgrade. Very exciting. It's good that that happens. 
Yeah, I'm getting a bit hungry too. Seafood ravioli. Look at that. Is that an inspiration? Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna have. I think it'll be Dave's killer bread. White Dave's killer bread. White bread done right. That sort of thing, with some Trader Joe's potato chips, and potentially some Havati, possibly some Marmite on the bottom. Yet to be decided. <laughs> but I'd like for us to see the whole thing before we before we close out. There we go. Thank you so much, Unreal Engine. That was very kind of you. Let's go back into the premiere, as people say, and import the next big and best thing, namely this one here. Image sequence uh, open, indeed. Alrighty, that is that. That is much longer now. That is now 39 seconds. Perfect. New sequence from clip. Rename clip into City Park version 6. And uh, yes, is that going to the end? It is. It is, it is, it is perfect. There we go. That's nice. All right, so Control M. And I think I might just up the up the data rate a little bit. Oh, we had this. Uh, that's 1920, just so that we can see it better. And go export that. And while it is doing that, which I'm hoping it's not going to take 10 minutes, I'm sure it's going to be faster than that. We're going to go and have a look at how how big the actual exported thing was. So we're talking 2,400 frames, and that is a size of 38 gigabytes. <laughs> That's that's a lot. Outcheru. So I'm sure it's not actually. I'm sure it's not actually. Um, yeah. Wow. Thirty-eight gigabytes uncompressed. And the correct, the, co the complete rendering time was uh, less than seven minutes, so six minutes for all that. That is probably, it probably took that long because of my hard drives only have a certain write speed. It probably wasn't actually the rendering that took that long. It's probably the writing things down on the hard drive that took that long. 38 gigabytes. Okay, so this takes another five minutes. I might actually take this opportunity to, uh, to have a little bathroom break. Give me five minutes, I will be back. I will also run a three minute long advert, so please close your eyes. But it means we then have uninterrupted uh, progress for those of you who are not subscribed. So let me do that and uh, I, will be, I will be right. City Park version six. Let's have a look here, the big reveal. I'll go put this on repeat because we're going to have to feast our eyes on this. Here we go. Here we go. It's good with the music as well. I think this is, this is perfect track for this. And Julia said quite rightly, I should put all these little animations that we've made, like where we've where we went through the guy's legs and stuff. That'll all be on my 3D shenanigans channel. I think there'll be a whole animatics compilation. Look at that. I mean, slick or what? That is just cool. I'm glad that he's matching the color of the 3D shenanigans sign. Wow. Super exciting. Yes, and there'll be a 4K version. The 38 gigabytes of material <laughs> condensed into <laughs> to some other stuff. One day, Captain, we'll do a stream. We'll do C64 stream and we'll program in basic and in assembly language. That's going to be great. Printing hello world in assembly language is going to take an hour. It's going to be great, but it'll be super fast. I mean, the printing, not, not so much the writing the code. When I say code, 
mnemonics, I guess is the word. Mnemonics. There we go. That is what we have accomplished in about three hours. The rendering itself took about less than seven minutes. I think the last time I looked at the watch was uh, was it was seven minutes, but I think it was actually done after about five and a half minutes. And we have AI behavior. We have people in the park. They are running around. I could even go ahead and render this out again just to see if there's a different animation sequence coming out so you know the guys will be in different positions so that might actually be worth a try just so that we have a couple of animation variations there just see which one's better that is cool under normal circumstances we'd now go and have a computer render for a week 24 7 and then complain about the lighting or something this is nice with the guy on the right there. This is great. Wonderful. 38 gigs on audio cassettes. Rod, it would be several thousand years, I assure you that. Can you imagine with that turbo tape? Ooh. Uncool that is. My friends, I'm gonna call it a day. Thank you so much for hanging with me. This was a lot of fun. It's great to be back on Twitch. I, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow, but, uh, you know, I'm sure I'll think of something. I have a feeling it'll be marvelous designer stuff. Maybe doing some shirts, some shorts, shorts and shirts. See if we can remember how it all worked. It was so awesome that you could witness this with me because this was something that, you know, isn't isn't easy. I mean, especially the part in the beginning where the keyframes didn't quite work out. That really takes practice. But I think that's what 3D is all about. You just got to keep doing it. And if something doesn't go right, just, just scrap it and try again. And don't be precious about it. And don't lose your nerves. Don't lose your cool. Rod, Unreal Engine is going to have your head smoking, but, you know, stick with it. It is just super, super exciting to explore. Once you get your head into that, super nice. Captain, Rod, Brian, anyone else who's out there watching, thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.